Happy New Year and welcome into Camel Call Friday. I'm Chris St. Meyer. With me as always is Evan Budrovich. Evan, I've got a long soliloquy here, so say hello to everybody before I go into my spiel. Well rested and go ahead, sir. <laughs> I'm well rested too and prepared. If you are new to this show, welcome. This is the place that every Friday we will get you caught up on Campbell Athletics. What's happening, what's coming up, what's going to happen if you only have 30 minutes to dedicate to Campbell Sports all week, this is the 30 minutes you should dedicate. If you have two hours, you really should go to one of our home sporting events. We've got 21 sports. All of our student athletes are awesome. All of our places to see sports are great. Our arenas, our stadiums. Kids 12 and under free. Parking is always free. Uh, a lot of our events are free. It's just awesome. GoCamels.com will be the place. We and this Podcasts, believe it or not, are on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. We also have a Camel Call Live podcast that airs every Tuesday. It's taped live every Monday at the County Seat Sports Grill in downtown Lillington from 630 to 730. If you're saying, hey, I didn't make it in the fall, we're probably not having any more. Oh, no, we're going every Monday through May. Uh, we're going to get to mix in some winter sports, some spring sports. It starts back up this Monday at the county seat. We always give away great prizes if you're in the live studio audience. This week's guest, head coach for our wrestling team, Scotty Sintes. We will talk more about wrestling coming up. I think I covered it all. Evan, how was your break? It, it was nice. I went to California, and I rode 200 miles on my bike. You're from California. You're from L.A., those new to the show. Exactly. <laughs> new year, new show, right? Uh, we're starting off with a new podcast. Um, a lot of eating in California. I probably gained about seven pounds in Los Angeles, so I have some work to do. That's why I rode the bike, to balance out the food. 200 miles. It was, it was five, it was six trips. I think each trip was between 35 and 40 miles, so after adding it all up, it, it was a neat week home. Are these scenics like going down Highway 1 and riding, or is this more in the suburbs? See, in theory, yes. But with the amount of traffic and cars coming by, it's not safe. Yeah, that'd be terrible. So you terrible. have to go on private roads or the beach. The beach actually has a bike path that goes okay. from Torrance, my hometown, all the way up to Santa Monica. And you just ride through you know, foot traffic and whatever, but you're not going to get hit by a car, at least. Well, thank goodness. Thank goodness. And you made it back because you obviously had to fly to L.A. You were one of the lucky few that made it back from Christmas I had break. two days of delays. Thank God no Southwest. But you could <laughs> see the bags at LAX piled up of all the bags that couldn't fly out. Seriously? Because we were in the terminal right next to them with oh. American. It was just, you know, it makes you fortunate that we travel with buses to a lot of these big South games. Yeah. Like trying to fly to... Oh. Northeastern next year around Christmas could be tough. Or yeah. fly to, you know, all those schools at Hofstra and Delaware, and it, it could be tricky. Many, many great things about the move to the CAA. The one thing, and there's a committee that's already starting to figure all this out, is they're going to have to fly not just, you know, your football teams and your basketball teams, but uh, everybody is going to have to in conference fly up to the Northeast. And you're right. And it's, you're flying commercial, and just like everybody else, if your Southwest flight gets canceled on a Thursday and you have a game Friday night in Boston, there are some things that, that have to be figured out. But there's a lot of companies that, that have figured it out, but it's something to think about. So we drove, which was the good news. We were driving up to uh, just north of D.C. in Silver Spring, Maryland, where uh, my wife Jessie's uh, brother lives. Uh, we've got our two 17th month old um, twins. And so we were like, okay, a, a five hour drive without traffic. How Boy, many this stops? Is, this is going, this is going to push them. We were, we were going to stop once in the middle and everything like that. Good news is they were awesome for five hours. The bad news is with traffic, it took eight hours <laughs> to get from our house right outside of Bowie's Creek up to Silver Spring. I will say this, the kids they they kind of got to the end of their rope at the between hour seven and eight. Mom and dad were at the end of their rope to that. When when you have grown, here are the towns that I have lived in in North Carolina: Newburn, North Carolina, small town, great place; Kinston, North Carolina, small town; uh, it's a truck <laughs> Lillington, stop. Yeah. Lillington, North Carolina, uh, great place. Um, right outside of Bowie's Creek. Now I haven't had traffic, and I grew up in Columbia, Missouri, which it was a time of which it was a town of fifty thousand for a while. I haven't had traffic. You grew up in it, you know it. I haven't had traffic literally my entire life, so that just kills you. It also took eight hours for us to come down, and again, they did they did pretty well considering the circumstances. So ninety five that time of the year is brutal. oh my gosh, I yeah. don't care who you are. It's just 
good luck. Yeah, and it's north of DC too, so you always are are going to hit something. It's amazing. Washington DC is an incredible town for many different reasons, and I love it. But I don't know if I could ever ever live there because of the traffic. Okay, there we go. You're caught up. All right, see ya. Nope, Campbell Sports. Here we go. Wrestling. They will be taking on 17th ranked Nebraska this Saturday at home. Let me repeat that. Out of the Big Ten, the Nebraska Corn Huskers, always a good wrestling team. They're top 20 this year. Did we confirm is Mike Minner showing up for this? Oh, Nebraska alum Did we call and him? Ring of Honor Hall of Famer Mike Minter. His That's number a, is retired yeah. on the press box that you can see at the football stadium. He won back-to-back national championships there under Tom Osborne. We might have to call and uh, and get him to come to the game to uh, to yell at uh, at Big Red. That should be that should be awesome. That's at seven. Oh, but that's not all that's going on Saturday. It's a triple header. One ticket, Evan, gets you into all three events. So wrestling will be taking on Gardner Webb in their first conference match, four o'clock before the Nebraska match. But then at one, and it's a special one o'clock time because of the, all the wrestling, women's basketball. Taking on Asheville. One ticket gets you into all three events. Show up at one, leave at 10, see a good Asheville basketball team, an OK Gardner Webb wrestling team in the top 20, Nebraska Corn Huskers, which a Campbell team that they're going into this knowing and thinking that they can upset Nebraska, and that's not far-fetched to think about. When you beat Purdue in your last team duel yeah. going into Christmas, beat them bad. That too. gives you confidence. I think, too, at home, and, and in Carter Gym, it was special because of the the history and the atmosphere, but now in a bigger arena where they draw really well, yeah. you pack the fans right behind the mats, they can yell and scream, and there's courtside, I guess it's what, mat, mat, side, side, yep. mat side seating, and, and Scotty, they build an atmosphere there. A lot, You have a lot of the walk-ons and the red shirts that are in the seats that build the atmosphere. Like I'm excited to stick around after the 1 o'clock basketball. Maybe I'll come back at seven. You know the the Gardner Webb, like that'll be interesting for a couple minutes. Yeah. And but yeah, that's seven o'clock at night. That I mean, Campbell's getting top twenty five votes early in the year. Not as no much doubt. now, but but still have talented wrestlers. So that'll be a really neat match. Yeah, and 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 again, just just shellacking Purdue, a, a Big Ten uh, wrestling team, not the power that Nebraska or, or, or a lot other of the of the Big Tens are, but. But just incredible what they have done. And now, and now finally, you know, wrestling is, is one of those. They're a winter sport, yes, but they start early and they don't really have their conference season until now. So to confuse you a little bit more, wrestling is in the Southern Conference. They're, they're in the SOCON because the Big South doesn't have enough full-time members that wrestle. They do have a couple, Gardner-Webb and Presbyterian, Campbell, the only full-time members in the Big South School with wrestling. Campbell is a four-time conference champs in the SOCON, eight SOCON trophies since 2016, 46 NCAA qualifiers. They have sent at least six to the national tournament over the uh, last handful of years, also in the SOCON. And and it's not like they have a, an easy conference that they just run through. App State and Chattanooga, they were wrestling powers at the mid-major level until Campbell came along. They, Campbell has had a wrestling team for a long time. They haven't had a very good wrestling team for decades, and they have built it into a legit top 40 power in the country. The alumni base, and I give Kerry Colat and then now Scotty Sentez yep. credit, they have formed together like like Plato, and they've just become this super mega fan base, yep. and they're passionate, and they're big on Twitter, I will say. I don't always see them on campus as much, but I'd love for them to come back and visit as much as they can. Mm-hmm. But their Wrestle Off in the Fall is a fantastic event on homecoming. And then this this tri-meet, there's a couple of tri-meets in January, which really sets up, if you want to come back for a weekend, go to Fuquay, come back to campus, you know, that's really neat. And then the, the Boone rivalry with App State, you know, Chattanooga is one thing, but yep. that Campbell-App State rivalry, the tournament's in Boone again this year. That is fantastic. Like and if you get a chance, go to Boone. It's venomous between the fan bases. It's it's something. App, App State was very proud of their very good wrestling program for a long time, and Campbell has beaten them four straight years. And fittingly, I love the schedule makers. The final two matches of the season: Chattanooga yeah. and App State, and they all wrestle each other in the final week. So basically, your regular season champ right at the end of February, and then at the start of March. Now I know it's tough right around the Big South tournament. So bear with me here drive down to Charlotte, go back up to Boone, go <laughs> yeah. back down to Charlotte, 
you know, time it all right. But oh. the championships, which yep. is a 12 hour wrestling day to watch them try to win every weight class. Yeah. Yeah. It's just uh, incredible what, what has been built. And again, it, it took a whole lot. And Scotty Sintez uh, can tell you, tell you about that. So it'll be fun to, to watch some really good wrestling uh, coming up this weekend. If you can't make it down to the Creek, all three of those games will be on ESPN plus hats off to our, uh, to our video stream crew. It will be a, a very, very long day for them. Women's basketball off to an undefeated start in the Big South Conference. And uh, we taped this on Thursday. So last night on Wednesday, an amazing game against uh, a Gardner Webb team that has beaten ECU, that has beaten some other group of five teams, beaten a lot of high mids. Gardner Webb heavily favored in that game. And, and Ronnie Fisher had his team right there at the end. Yeah, you got to be slightly frustrated, though, right? You do all the work to take the lead in the first quarter. You have six players that score six or more points. Shaituli's still out, so there's balanced scoring without her. Christabel Azuma is a double double machine. You have 14 points, nine rebounds last night on Wednesday. You know, for them, though, you get one possession to win it and you miss the game winning bucket. And that's what they've always found a way to do. His sideline out of bounds plays are some of the best I've ever seen. There's no doubt. He had, he had what? It was one point. One, no, it was 0.7 seconds uh, in the front court for a play, and it was a lob down low that, that nearly worked. Probably could have called a foul if this was in if this was in the five minutes left in the first half. It now, was the exact same play. Now, coaches don't watch the scout of this, that they call it against Central Florida Yeah, that nearly worked to beat UCF, who's undefeated in the American. Right. That's a really good team. So clearly they're right there. And I think at home you're going to see a re- rejuvenized, a focused effort a little more healthy, too, with the squad. So I, I, the Saturday would be neat to see them just get back into rhythm, get to 3-1 and one in the league, hopefully, and try to carry on. Because them and Gardner-Webb are, are two of the yep. best by far. Yeah, I, I, I would be shocked if Gardner-Webb and Campbell in, in one form aren't in the top two at the very most, the top three. But it's going to be a fun conference season, really, really in the women's and, and men's side of the Big South. So – we're just through three games, and remember, it's a, it's a round-robin tournament this year. You play everybody at home, everybody on the road, 18 games in this 10-team league on both the men's and women's side, and just through three games, there's only two undefeated teams left on the women's side of things, two teams that haven't won a game. On the men's side, there's one undefeated team through three games, that's Longwood, and one team that hasn't won a game, that's High Point. And High Point were, the, were the darlings of the non-conference season. Uh, on the women's side, you might think sh- see things shake out a little bit more of the haves and haves not. But on the men's side, my goodness, it is going to be a who shows up, who has somebody that's hot, who's going to play tougher, who wants it more night in and night out. All those things sound cliche, but when you're playing 18 games and you're doing these midweek Wednesday games, you're going to catch some people, you're going to get caught. Boy, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of folks on social media put out the circle of losing, how every team beats the other team in a league, especially in football. Like oh, the okay. Sickos yeah. committee puts out a, sure. a little circle diagram of, and you look at it this year. Now, Longwood, of course, undefeated. Right. Everyone else has found a way to beat everyone else in the league. Charleston Southern, and I love what they do down there with just the emotion and the energy. They're not always very good. Yeah. They beat Upstate, who's 2-1. and one. High point, 0-3. Oh Radford, who has a win, Winthrop beats Presbyterian, who then beats Campbell, who then beats Gardner-Webb. So you, you just go into the night, like, don't yep. bet on it, one, for an NCAA compliance standpoint. But two, if you want to make money, don't bet on this league. It is so complicated and convoluted, and they're yep. all – it's you know, Longwood, and we saw them here in the creek before the New Year's, they look really good, and they're not fully healthy either. Campbell's getting healthier. You just don't yeah. know, it, which makes it fun and stressful at the same time. Yeah, so uh, on the women's side, that that kicks off our uh, our tip-off, I should say, our uh, our triple header with uh, the two wrestling matches ever. That's going to be at 1 o'clock, a special 1 o'clock time as they'll take on Asheville. And then next Wednesday, the women will stay at home. They'll be at home against USC Upstate at 7. Now, I've got some good news and bad news. It's easier to follow the conference schedule this year on both sides. Every Wednesday, every Saturday, both our men and women are playing. If the women are at home, the men are on the road. At the same school. And they're both playing at the same opponent. So this weekend, UNC Asheville, Campbell's women is playing them here. Campbell's men will be at Asheville. Me and you, when that first came out, were like, okay, finally, it's a a round robin. 
And um, th- that, that's the big South that's office the big calling. South office calling me trying to shut down this uh, <laughs> shut down this podcast because I've got some criticisms of my friends. Oh, of I've the heard big South from office. my boy Phil Constantino, Gardner Webb, <laughs> that this iteration of the schedule will not happen again next okay. year. Okay, well, yeah, not our problem anymore. Right, but. right. So, okay, it's like okay, well, this is pretty easy to keep track of, but. You're usually playing at 2 o'clock on Saturday, 7 o'clock on Wednesday. Everybody's playing at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. And so it's hard. Last night, a great women's game. I was on the air on ESPN Plus doing the men's side of the thing. I got to see the last seven seconds of the women's game. And that's how it's going to be in a lot of games this year. And also, too, just think if you're at home, you're going to have to pull up two screens or have something on your phone. Or if you choose to go to the men's or women's games, you're most likely going to miss the other game on, on, on ESPN plus. So, you know, finally they're doing the round Robin. Finally, they're doing things that make sense. We're playing every Wednesday and Saturday, but then all that happens. So. If you made me conference commissioner for a day, let's do it. Well, you know what? Let's do it. Final year in the big South, the division two model double header, both teams travel to Carson Newman. If you're Catawba, and you play a women's game at 5 or 4.30 and a men's game at 7 or 7.30. It attracts fans. It builds an atmosphere. Wow. It's continuity. Yeah. Your staff support gets more time off, at least work-life balance a little bit. I know not every coach loves it, but even if a crowd shows up for a little bit of one, a little bit of the other, that's better than having your people confused to how to watch a Wednesday 7 o'clock Campbell Road game or – do I leave at 6.30 from my house and go to a Campbell men's, you know, like vice versa? Yeah, no, you're How right. do you watch them both? Yeah, it will be it will be very, very interesting. Speaking on the men's side of thing, the men's getting a big win. This was yeah. a Gardner-Webb team that alongside of Longwood was the hottest in the Big South. They'd won five straight games. Tim Kraft uh, had his team, as usual, rolling. They started 2-0 and in the conference, and Campbell never trailed. Uh, in a game that they ended up winning, at times really dominating a very good Gardner-Webb team. I love that performance, too, because if there's any coach in the league that scares you, it's Tim Kraft. His teams are always well-coached. They're yep. always disciplined. And they always play defense, right? And that's what we want to see out of this Campbell team. They, they struggled against Longwood, and we're very upfront about that and said, hey, we have to bounce back. We have to play better. The toughness was there. The discipline, the rebounding. And and Lorena's voice, Steris, whose name was blasted out of your mouth 100 times on the broadcast, yeah. Not a player you always expect to play, but here he was with 13 points and got the start and, and big minutes. And, and Coach McGee, and to his credit, he emotionally invested with his players. They were You saw Ricky Clemens at the end of the game, fist pumps and an emotion. And like this mattered to them. On the bench, still Jesus is out, but he's celebrating every bucket. Like yeah. That stuff translates. It matters. It's hard to replicate every night, but... Campbell needed this win, and credit to them for doing it. Yeah, and doing it without Jesus Carrillero, a, a broken wrist to one of their senior starters. He will hopefully be back near the end of the season for the tournament. And then Campbell has been without Devin Dunn, who's been in concussion protocol. He is a transfer. You might not know his name, but he is one of those guys that has been coming off the bench and knocking down a couple of threes. And a lot of times that's all the difference uh, in these games. So, so a great win for them. You're right. Um, back on the winning track, a, a tough one against a very good UNC Asheville team with the best player in the league and Drew Pember, the Tennessee transfer, who is a double-double machine. If you remember, he had eight blocks yep. against Campbell last year in the, in the building. He, single, he single-handedly won that game uh, as, uh, as, they came back, as they came back down the stretch. And speaking of, we've kind of laid out the parody. To throw one more things in, it might not be a bad thing uh, 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 to a lot of the teams, but on the, on the women's side, you know, Campbell could win the regular season. They could uh, be with Gardner-Webb in the top couple. The top six teams of the 10-team conference end up with a first-round buy. Now, if you were a Big South commissioner for a day, you probably would protect your top seeds in the conference tournament uh, a, a little bit better. You could do a double buy. You could do a lot of different things. But that's what's going to make things so wild. So after going through on both sides this uh, unbelievably up and down and, and what I think is going to be a roller coaster um, of a year in the Big South Conference, the top six teams get a bye and really have a good chance in a parity league to win Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. That's what's wild about this as well. And also that means late in the season, teams that are around six and seven, probably under 500 in the conference, are still going to have tons to play for because that first round bye in a tournament like that, a one-bid league, is, is so, so valuable. 
Think about Campbell last year, the one seed. They played Presbyterian, who won the day before that 8-9 matchup. That was an overtime game. Yeah. And had chances to win it. Presbyterian had shots to win it late. You're not assumed you're going to the semifinals right. with that bye. And that's the parity of the league. And we saw last year Longwood get really hot on the women's side and basically run the table without much of a competition. But there's no guarantee you get to a final. Yeah. It's not... There are certain weight leagues that will – the Patriot League will give the double bye for your one and two seeds. Every league has a different approach yeah. to it. I think it leads to more parity and more wild, crazy games. But you're right. If there's a year to be in the top two or three, right? you don't want to – you can't yeah. finish below six no. and win the league. No, no. And and two, I think you, got, you, you had to have looked at it as, okay, we finally have – when you're playing an unbalanced schedule, I understand how you're not going to give everybody a, everybody a first-round bye. But when you're playing a balanced schedule, if you finish one-two in either the men's and women's side this year, you deserve a double bye, and you deserve to have the best chance of, of making it to the NCAA tournament. Again, that's, a, that's another thing. And, and again, if you finish outside the top two, you're going to feel pretty good. If you're settled in fourth and fifth, you're going to have as good a chance as they do. So we'll see where our teams end up, and we'll probably argue about it more, yeah. uh, depending if, uh, if both the men's and women's team finish at the top of the conference. I tell you, though, these next two games, like you mentioned, the same opponent, men, women. So yeah. on the men's side, at Asheville, at Upstate, if you get one, yeah. you're in a good spot. You get two, it's the dream scenario. If you get zero, you got some work to do. So it's right in front of the squad, and they've shown against Gardner Webb they can, when they're at their best, they're really good. Yeah. But can they stay consistent at their best? On the women's side, now you're two at home. Asheville, who they are better than on paper, and they've played better than. And Upstate, who's having a bounce back year, brand new head coach, all five starters transferred from last year's yeah, upstate they're team. They're so undefeated it's uh, a with lot Gardner. Of new the faces the and yeah, they start two and zero in the league. So you take care of business in those two, and then you're four and one. It's like okay, we put ourselves in a spot to compete on Valentine's Day weekend against Gardner Webb back at home, possibly for the title. Oh, hey guys, it's January. That means we've got wrestling, we've got basketballs, we've got swimming and track, and oh by the way. Our spring sports are, what did you say? About preseason month, polls. Five, yep. five weeks away, we'll be talking about preseason polls and all that afterwards. Good to talk to you, Evan. Good to see you again. I missed you. You're looking nice in your... Oh, thank you. A lot of different colors on that shirt. Pink and blues and, Boy, and grays. If this, was, if this was a video podcast, man, I dressed up for it. All right, thanks for joining us uh, all of last fall. Thanks for joining us in the new year. Happy New Year. This is Camel Call Friday. We'll be back with the live show Monday at 630 with wrestling head coach Scotty Sintez. Have a great week, everybody.